further, um, perhaps individual conversation. And then, as well as those, let's say, introduction to the sectors, we're doing specific skill sessions. This one, uh, one went boots up, um, with a CV masterclass. So, thinking about how can you get from, let's say, a stack like this, uh, how can you get from you know, 50 CVs or even 80 CVs to yours coming to the top? And when we do um, some of the exercises later, I'm going to get you to look at some CVs you'll start to realize just how easy it is to make your CV from average to really quite nice. And it can have the same information on, but it's the way you pitch and present that. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the CVs in turn, and recruiters, how long do you think they spend looking at an average CV? What do you think? About a minute. About a minute, anyone else? Yeah, maybe about a minute. Yeah, well we, interesting, we asked a panel of recruiters who came in, and they said the initial look about 10 to 15 seconds. Okay? And they think they can tell is this person going to go anywhere or not. If they like that initial scan, they might spend a minute, minute and a half having a little look. And we're going to do just that. So I want you to bear in mind that what we're looking for points, because if you were a recruiter, and today you are hungry recruiters based on cognition, thinking, am I going to get the right person? These are the criteria which you've been asked to recruit against. Okay? These six criteria. And now we're just going to have a 10 to 15 second look at the first CV and just give me your initial thoughts. So just, yeah, what do you think? Most of the relevant information is in the last paragraph at the bottom, to be honest. And most of the rest of it is is fairly relevant. I mean, T1 here, this degree is not a relevant subject. And just at the bottom, it's got the work experience for an IT company. Okay. okay. That's the relevant info. So the relevant info left, left at the bottom, not a great start. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, anyone else? And we need to say on CV1. Could be no better. Yeah, could be no better. What do you mean? Yeah. What? Or like when you go down to employment, I've mean, noticed the other ones seem to be quite well like involved. Yeah. Then you've got the same people saying when you turn over, you look at like the US and London Union, it's a little bit of a muddle to look at. Okay. Okay. They confuse me. Right, a bit confusing, a bit of a muddle. Okay, well, let's have a look at CV2. Just 10 to 15 seconds, let's have a look at some code. Time to be two. Yes, sir, coming to you, what do you think? I, I think they both seem to have um, good stuff, but for it seems to me that I guess he's put the relevant information at the top and he's done it in a better order, so it started with what they want and then the sort of stuff that's good but not as important, like leisure activities, is at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, so some of the relevant stuff's near at the top, he's kind of focused in on job description. Yeah, that's nice, thank you. I think it's easier to. I, I, I think the first one, you can, I don't know how you get much out of it in 10 seconds, whereas in the second one, yeah. you kind of you know where to look for what you're looking for. Okay. So, headings helped you. If you didn't have a lot of time, yeah. here's the information you need. Okay, yeah, thank you. That's nice. Any other side of the room? Anybody got any thoughts, comments? I saw a key thing you didn't want to there right at the beginning. Yeah. It's just very direct. Basically. Okay, straight to the point. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's, so that, that's the kind of, uh, on this sort of base, on the 10 to 15 second look, who would put through candidate one, the first sort of person we looked at, number two. Okay, fine, fine, fine. So just in case, um, perhaps CV1 has got the detail, but it's just not very well presented, um, let's have a little look. So I want you to just do that now, that 90 second look. Okay, each CV in turn. And I want you to score it. So this little criteria here, what we're looking for, there's six bullet points here. And I want you to give um, for each bullet point uh, two marks so you can find it really easily and it's uh, evidenced well. One point, it's kind of there or thereabouts, and then zero marks if you just can't find the information you're looking for and you've got to move on. So at the end of the 90 seconds, just look at CV1. You have a mark out of 12, addressing these six bullet points. And if you feel like it's easier, you can rip the first sheet off and then compare the six criteria with the first CV. It's, if the point is easy to find, give it two, kind of easy, one, pretty hard, zero. Any questions on that? Does that make sense? Just add up those two marks if you can't go around to that yet. And I'll be coming to you to your. Scores. 
CV1, what if, what if, let's go around, what do people get for CV1? Four. Four. Start, yes, good start. Six. Six, a little bit nicer, yeah. Seven. Should we get us a good move tonight? Okay, yes. Seven. Six. Four. Four. Five. Six. 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 Seven. Seven. Eight. Eight. Oh, you want to be recruited by this guy here. Yes. Actually, the ten. Okay, very nice. Okay, okay, okay. You got that item. Okay, fine. So we've got a rough average of a, for about a five, maybe four and a half, five, something like that. Maybe it brings it up to five. Um, okay, what about CB two? What do you go for? Twelve. Okay, full twelve. 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 Ten. Eleven. Ten. Eight. Eight. Okay. Come back to that, yeah. Can we say 11? Okay, 11. 11. 11. 10. 11. Uh, I'm a little bit less. Okay, okay. Interesting, interesting. Okay, um, so an average, let's say 10 or 11. Um, now, who, who, I guess, who noticed the kind of, about these two CVs? There's something going on with them. Yeah. One noticed. Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing, it's the same experience, uh, it's just laid out differently. So you can see, on the one hand, you've got perhaps a four, uh, five or six, and on the other hand, perhaps an 11 or a 12. And it's just the same experience, same skills, just laid out in a slightly different way. But those small differences make a big impact um, on you, the reader. I mean, what are the sort of things that you, why do you go to 12? Let's, let's start with that. Because they're telling you what, they're telling you what they're going to tell you before they tell you. Yeah. They could do that. So they've gone from you know, what we're looking for, yeah. and they've given it. They've, they've written to the heading what they what they want, what you want to see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Any other reasons? So there's some high marks on here. Why did you? The the key words that you're looking for from the the description are involved. So you yes. just have to scan your eyes down, and it's everything that you're looking for. Right. You can just take it off. Right. And, and if you're recruiting, you have limited time. Let's imagine you put your CV into a company. You're going to have limited time. This is not their only job. Some of them may be HR professionals, but most of the time they have something else to do, and this is something they just need to do because someone's left or they need to employ someone real quick. And so if you can make it really easy for them, yeah, it's nice. Now, I remember who was saying it found it quite confusing looking at the first one. Was it, yeah, yeah. How did you find the second? Was it easier to access? Yeah, and they laid it out properly um, with headings. Um, so, for example, I really liked in the education bit where they had a little bit about them, and then they'd actually put like the different things like organisation, research and analysis, and that's what people want to see. So they literally just put it in bold, so you look straight at it. Because I didn't even read the top bit; I only read those bits. Right. Okay. 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 Because there's no point in reading the top bit. But you don't know what it's going to be about. Okay, okay, so is that, I mean, the, the one point is made, essentially each recruiter will have a job description. If you ignore the job description, you're ignoring them telling you what they want out of the person. If you ignore that, you're just making it up, you're just hoping for the best. And if you're employing someone, and they just, I don't know, say for example, you want someone in marketing, and they just said, well, I've done this, I've done this random thing, I've done this other thing, but uh, might be of interest, it might not. You're not going to put them top of the pile. If someone's taking careful attention to what you have asked for I and mean, giving you relevant examples, that person becomes interesting. So yeah, learn a lesson. This is, as I said, very easy to go from a 12, possibly, down to a 4 in just reformatting, re-editing, and highlighting. Yeah, please. Can I just ask something? Please, please can. Is it the same person? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just different names on the top? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Same experience. Um, it's just to point out that with good formatting, you can do a lot. Okay, so if you're um, thinking about CVs, a little bit of a checklist here, um, think of this kind of target impact, and as, uh, so what's your name in the jacket over here? I think that's Rob. Rob, cool. Um, as Rob said, um, the first person, he waited quite low down in the CV to actually give the relevant sort of information. Um, with this sort of target for impact, really the back page is really the bonus page, and, and you pretty much win or lose by the top half of the first page. If you haven't grabbed them by then, it's unlikely it's going to be a deal sealed and a contract signed. So really think about where you're going to put the things that they really want to know about. Just to make sure that happens. Presentation, this is the first professional document they're going to see from you. So it looks average, they probably think you're average, and they won't call you back to the interview. 
So get a second pair of eyes on it. Get a friend, get myself, get someone else to have a look. To your spelling, your grammar, your content. It really, really makes a great first impression if it's nice. And then think about the structure. If, for example, you've got a lot of work experience, you might even want to put that above your education. So normally education comes first, but if you've got a lot of work experience, maybe further on down the line, you might want to put that first because it makes you stand out. And also, if you've got lots of work experience, lots of random things, but maybe one or two relevant things, you might want to consider having two sections. So relevant job experience and then other, or other professional experience. And that makes sure the relevant stuff is top of the list. But still keeping it in the chronology, reverse chronological order, but in the nice stuff going first. Okay, so um, I want to um, just ask if there's any questions on that before we kind of segue into applications. Yeah, please. Um, sometimes when someone thinks of a CV, um, they just think of, you know, a document that would represent who they are to any job that they're applying for. Right, yes. However, as we probably um, have seen, it seems as if um, a person has to change their CV to suit the job description. Sure. So are you saying that if, if a person applies for a job, you have to basically turn it into an application that they would look for? Um, because then that would mean it's very difficult to make an overall unified CV for everything. Um, yes, you've made my point. That's exactly right. You mm -hmm. cannot hand the same CV to everyone. Because okay. they're not interested in the same things. If they were, then they would work 100%, but they're not. Um, and even, let's imagine, um, I don't know, what, what, what are you to, uh, a hobby, what's a hobby of yours? Some of you wouldn't mind I, sharing with the group. I'm guide leader. Okay, guide leader, okay. So, you could get, I'm sure, what do you call different, is it different troops of guides? Uh, units. Different units, fine. So you could probably apply to the same unit, and, or, or a different unit in a different city, and they might want different things. Yeah. There might be a different ethos in that unit, how they, what they like to do, what kind of expertise they think they have, what the leaders enjoy. So even within a very similar um, body, uh, like the Girl Guides, you've got very different um, skills that they might want. Or just slight tweaks, and if you had an application that really knew about that, it would make you a strong contender. Now think about what you might do at two different companies or two different charities. They're just so different because they're led by people and none of you are the same. And that's the same when you're applying to these places. There might be core things they want that are similar, but that ethos, that little bit extra, it's going to be different each time. Any other questions on CVs? Yeah, please. Just for the second one, can we take this as sort of a template for how uh, to do a CV? Can you copy it? Uh, yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think you would um, want to, so for example, you need to be a little bit careful with the profile. Um, profiles can be done really badly or really well. Um, so a bad profile goes something like, I'm a dynamic, amazing, entrepreneurial, leadership field graduate. Okay? Because there's no evidence in that, and that's a problem. If it's like this one, which is, here's a skill, here's a nice example, here's a skill, here's a nice example, here's a skill, here's a nice example, of the top things they want, brilliant, yeah, go for it. Um, but yeah, yeah, you can use that as a template, yeah, sure. Yeah. Do we have to put in our date of birth? Because oh, some right, people yeah. are saying <laughs> that if you do, you might possibly get discrimination, age discrimination or something like that. Would you say that it's a good idea to put the date of birth in or not? So, not, not everything on these CVs is perfect for yeah. another reason, uh, for kind of training purposes. So no, you don't want your date of birth on the CV. So the second one is good, but it's not perfect. So yeah, be careful with things like that. Um, so it still has a date of birth on, for that exact reason. People say, oh, the date of birth still on there. Um, yeah, keep it off, yeah. I know we're going into application forms now, but you know one application forms where they have the like um, equality thing to make sure they're yeah. all checking for equality? What really are they actually looking for? Because I mean, it's all the questions like, what race are you? What's rage? Yeah. That's what it's here. But, or what religious sect are you from? Like, I don't really understand. Obviously, I put what I, what I am, yep. what not, but yep. I don't understand what they're looking for on that slash. Okay. How that's going to affect my application. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so um, they have a duty to have, especially public sector bodies, to represent the people that they serve. Okay, so, so if, for example, 3% of the population is disabled, they should have 3% of the workforce as disabled employees. Okay. So if they're kind of trying to match that, and then if they don't have that within their workforce, how are they going to get that? 
So are they going to advertise, I don't know, through, I don't know, special open days for people with dyslexia, let's imagine. So they can say, look, this job is great, you can still do it with dyslexia, don't worry that this isn't your strength because we love the skills you bring. Okay, so it could be to do with that, how they target their recruitment. They usually will be separated when you apply. So the person looking through the applications won't see the data um, on your, let's say, your ethnicity or uh, gender or whatever it is. They're kind of separated at point. So HR will collect them, but the person reviewing won't see that data. Okay. Um, or shouldn't, yeah. That's kind of... So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really worry about doing that kind of thing anymore. Cool, well, let's move on to applications. So, um, just a few things on applications. And um, a question as to why, because there's been a massive shift towards applications instead of just a CV and a covering letter. Um, and if you didn't catch the CV cover letter sort of session we did a while back, um, should I think, come and see me. Um, if you haven't uh, yet been told about the one to one, so I come in every Monday. And from 10 till 12, um, I basically run a uh, drop-in session, so 20 minutes. Um, some of you I know have had them. And um, it's to ask any question. It's for me to check over a CV or an application form, you know, bring in a draft. Or simply to have big questions. You know, I don't want to do with my life. No idea. <laughs> Graduating, but ah, um, this kind of thing. So come in to book them. Just simply uh, go on the um, people of careers page. So just Google people of careers. And then there is an email address on there, and that goes to the administrator of the City Senate House. Because I'm not here the other days, she then puts it in my diary to make sure that's not booked, and no one can books and things like that. So you'll see the email address, book it through her, the 20 minute slots, just say, hey, I want a 10 block, or 10 20, or 10 40, or, or 11, or 11 20, or 11 40, and then she'll put that in. Um, okay, so um, a few things. So why do app app employers use applications? Well, one, they're a real hassle to fill in, okay? Who's actually filled in a decent-ish application form? Kind of a lengthy kind of job. I mean, how long did it take you? About an hour. About an hour? Okay, wow, that's quick. Mm -hmm. uh, any thoughts? Hour. Hour? Half an hour. Wow, okay, fine. So, some applications, people can spend days on these things, okay? I would say an hour, that is brief. That's brief. Um, give us obviously your part-time job. Sure, fine. But if you're going for your you know, dream job of choice, more than an hour is probably necessary. A lot of people see it, see the form, I think, not interested, let's move on. Um, it also allows them, if everyone did the same question, for example, um, I don't know, why do you want, why, why do you want 20, 20 pounds? Yeah, I could assess your individual merit to that amazing answer I'm sure you give. If I just said, hand in your CV for this 20 pounds, then I have to think, oh, how do I judge this one against this one? He's got different experience to her. How, how do I do that? So it levels the playing field. It makes it very easy to stand up and stand out. Um, this allows the employer to ask you relevant things, essentially, and not just have a random CV or load different things. You can nail, or she can nail down to, okay, I need you to do lots of writing in this role. Tell me about your own experience. Um, and, yeah, sure, we can answer lots of different questions. Now, I want you to um, just have a look at a couple of examples. There's two big examples you're going to get in any application. The first is a motivation question, and this is an example of that. We just have a little read. The question is, why do you want to work as an account manager for a marketing agency? I don't have words. Have a little read, and then tell me what you think. Thoughts on this sort of motivation question, the question that says, with passion and conviction, why I want this job? Any thoughts on this question? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, yeah. He doesn't really mention any any, any relevant skills. I mean, he says it matches my skills and they would help me achieve my goals, but he doesn't say why, really. It, 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 the structure also seems to be in a lot more. I mean, he's saying, oh, well, I want to go abroad mm -hmm. up at the top, and he's got, well, actually, it's relevant to my career driven skills and experience down the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, it just seems to be very badly structured. Okay. Is the structure? Yes, but thank you. Uh, I yeah. feel like it's a bit of a selfishly written piece. I feel <laughs> yeah. like he should be. I know he I mean, he makes it sound like they're gonna they're doing themselves a favour by hiring him, whereas I feel yeah. like it should be a little bit more. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. 
I'd like to work abroad at some point, uh, I'd like to, you fit my skills, I'm interested in developing this. Yeah, it's all about, it's all about this candidate, yeah. Yeah, what you can or what you can get out of here. Uh, any other points you want to raise for this answer? Yeah, more or less the same things, like it sounds like he wants to have fun, more than anything. <laughs> right. And it's too broad, so there is nothing about the company that shows really what's in the company. What? Yes. It's too broad, like the whole international, yes, that shows good reputation, but you can put it in one sentence. Yes. You don't need, like, more than that. Yeah, okay, yeah, thank you, that's a great point. So, the problem with this is you copy and paste it to pretty much any organization of any size in the world and it'll kind of fit, that's all about that. Right, this is a, a, a better example, so just have a read and just, just let's have a think about what makes this particular one better. Okay, any thoughts on this one? It's by no means perfect, but, yes. I think it's better because it sort of, it sort of draws the person who's writing it into the fold. Okay, yeah. How, how does he do that? Just in terms of, you know, I'm familiar with the products of your client base. Uh, I'm also attracted to different bits. Mm -hmm. I've met various people involved. With yeah. The organization. What does that show? Dedication. Yeah, he's interested. Yeah. yeah he or she is interested. They've gone out of their way, they've met the company, uh, they know about the reputation, they've read a bit about them, they've done a lot of internship. Yeah, all those sort of things. That's yeah, great. Did you have a? Um, I was just going to say the same thing actually. Yeah. Just um, that he's making it relevant to them rather yeah. than just saying you're good. Yes. Obviously, it makes it sound like you've really bothered rather than just sort of applying for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. So put in a bit of time and effort. Can't be copy and pasted. It's bespoke to that organisation. And again, once you have 80, 100 applications for one job, and I've, I've been in a scenario, I've got a whole set of applications looking through, you can just tell the people who copy and paste it, they chucked it out in half an hour, someone who spent time like this, you know, this will take a while, this will take a little bit of time to put together. Okay, now the second um, big kind of question you're going to get is competency questions. So you've got motivation number one, competency number two. Now, these go along the lines of something like, Please give a recent example of the team you've been involved. Um, what was your role? What challenges did you face? So, about teamwork, what did you do? And what challenges do you have? Often these questions have got three questions in the one question, and you've got to weigh them in. So you've got to be quite tight with kind of how you give that example. Um, another example, describe a recent situation you've demonstrated the motivation and initiative, and again, work out very tight, has to be quite succinct. Um, now, if you get competency questions, you get about 70% of the recruitment process. Today, most firms of any size, and smaller companies may do some on-the-fly kind of um, applications, a bit kind of random, but any companies thought about the recruitment process will standardize it to competency questions. And they are simply assessing, have you got this skill? And then what you do is give a nice example, tell a bit of a story, and they go, oh, okay, well, I was thinking they're a massive risk to take them on, but now they're told me they can do it. They've got a nice example. They go, no, okay, move on, next question. And they just go through like that. Yeah. Should you just take what they're looking for from their application? So the skills uh -huh. they've asked for, you show those skills in something you've done before and explain it. Right. Is that what you should do? 100%. Okay. So some, some companies are better than others. Some will give you a full job description that tells you exactly what they're going to be asking about the interview. Um, and it will come back to that job description that we looked at from the CV. There'll be something very similar. They might even tell you in the interview, we'll focus on these bits. The bigger companies do now. They say, we are looking for how you deal with challenge, how, what's your customer sort of skills like, what's your business acumen like. We'll be testing this interview and a short case study, something like that. And then you know what's coming up. Also, you said they're normally a short amount of words. I looked on the, I haven't applied for it, but I was on the yep. Santander internship right. the other day. And there was, it was, the question before, I haven't got the policy question, the question before, for the motivation, it was 1,500 words max. And I just uh, thought, uh, uh, yeah. firstly, I'm never going to write 1,500 yeah. words. I was going to write like 200 words explaining. Yeah. Yeah. But does that mean that they want 1,500 words? Or is it just for crazy people who just, yeah. they're doing it as like a, just a maximum? I just, I didn't really know what to do. <laughs> That's, that, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one because some of them say like a, a character limit, four thousand characters, which is yeah. good. It's quite a lot of words you can put in there. These five, six, seven hundred. Um, if you get a big old word count, 
um, then you should be feeling quite a bit of it because you're up against people. Let's imagine you try to sell yourself. Now you could sell yourself on like a little bit of paper like this. If you have an A3 poster, you're generally going to do a better job. It's yeah. more eye-catching, more detail, more examples. However, it's still going to be relevant. Well. You don't want to bore them over a page and a half. Um, so that's where a nice structure comes in. So you might even want to put in bullet points and headings. And you can do that. Um, but yeah, you want to use a decent amount of word count because your methods will be. Um, does that make sense? OK, so I want to show you two quick examples. Um, and describe the time we instigated change to solve a problem. This is a competency question. Look at answer number one, and then we'll have a look at answer number two. Now remember that this one, the word count is 75 words. So what, what I tend to find is better answers, they just read more easily. Sometimes you can read an answer and think, oh, maybe I'm just not getting this. But then you read some with clarity, and it's just much easier to read off the page. Now, this is by no means a perfect answer, but he starts to, you know, he's identified, he's explained, he's suggested, he's negotiated, and he has, you know, a result at the end. It's a bit of a weak one, but it is there. Um, now the final thing I want to show you is there's a great um, framework that you can use to answer competency questions. And I think if the only thing you take away from today, it will be this. Um, because it said competency questions are about 70% of the recruitment process. Um, the others are motivation questions and a few things that might reflect on your strengths and weaknesses. Um, this, um, some of you may know this by the other acronym, which is STAR. Okay, that's in the literature, that's pretty common if you look up uh, competency technique uh, for interview skills, application form star comes up. Card is just simply a shortened version. Um, what you need to do is you need to first introduce, let's take an example of uh, leadership. Tell me how you've been a leader. You want to quickly introduce the, the context of that leadership position. So what was it in? Was it uh, you know, the girl guide troop? What were you doing? Just a bit of background. And that should be about 15 to 20% of your answer. Okay? The next is going to be your action. What did you do to prove you had that particular skill? So in leadership terms, it could be um, that you delegated different tasks, you talked about the different skills on the team, uh, you led them up this mountain, whatever it is. And that's about 70% of your answer. And then finally, the last 15 20%, you want to start talking about a result. Now, most people forget this, and it makes your answer kind of just tail off in the distance. So you need to plan those answers to have a lovely result at the end, which is positive. So in the example of this expedition, girl guiding, etc., led expedition, the result was uh, we got back on time, the kids had an amazing time, the feedback from the parents was blah, blah, blah. Yeah? If, however, the story ends with we lost half the group, you might not want to tell that story. Okay? Mm -hmm. And what that does is it needs to be planned in advance. So on the fly, trying to make up answers is tough. That'd be done, but it's tough. So you want to get hold of the job description beforehand and put a nice example next to each of the things they're going to ask you about. Okay, and if you do lots of research on I can help you think about that as well. So we'll leave that one, but I want you just to stress if you have time, perhaps before your um, when you're doing these applications, it could be helpful just to speak it out to see are you convincing? And get a friend, get a partner. And you just verbalize your answer to them and just see, does it recapture really this competency? Have I really nailed this skill beyond doubt that I have it? If the person's like, it's kind of weak, it's not really enough evidence, you know, uh, I'm, I'm missing what you're trying to say here, then you've got a problem. Okay, if you want more um, on this subject, there are some really nice free guides, which if you're, if you're a sort of person um, who enjoys just, some, just to read a bit more material at your leisure, um, then Grads into Careers is a fantastic site. Uh, and there's full length guides on um, application forms, on CVs, on interviewing, on assessment centers, all the components you're going to need to go forward. Another part of the site is um, under Grads into Careers, there's also um, Job Online, and there's about 3,400. Um, yeah, I think it's 3,400 at the moment, opportunities, it's the largest graduate site um, in the UK. And again, if you're looking for full-time, part-time um, internships, that's a great place to go. Okay, um, further help on this subject, uh, as I said right at the beginning, come and see me, do your draft, uh, CV application, whatever it is, bring it in, book via that email address, just simply Google, 
deeper of careers, and you'll find it on that page. Uh, I can check all these kind of things. Start looking at job descriptions. Next time you're about to go to CV, or an application, look at the job description. I can't say that strongly enough. And then have a look at UCL for, well, it's, it's for everyone. UCL Job Online, Kings, they all feed into this pot. So all the employers are interested in the University of London students put their stuff on this website. Okay. Any questions?